can you explain again what you were you were just talking about the salps? Animals like salps and um, the different jellyfish that would be the deep water uh, pelagic animals that are going to live offshore in the open ocean, they would normally occur at a, at a certain depth in the ocean. And as they've been feeding on these small dispersed droplets of oil, it's uh, changing the, the density or the, uh, the, the buoyancy of the animals and they're starting to occur up higher in the water column where they're finding them on the surface. It may not seem like a big change for most people, but animals like these different, uh, the siphonophores and the salps and the different jellyfish are very important food source for a lot of animals. A lot of fish will start their life cycle living and hiding in the tentacles of something like a lion's mane jellyfish. Uh, animals like the large leatherback sea turtles feed on things like salps and siphonophores and jellyfish. So it's going to start... At, at the lowest level, these droplets are going to resemble plankton. They're going to be fed on by plankton feeders. And if it's doing something like changing their, their density or they're changing their buoyancy and moving them into areas of the water column that they don't normally occur in, it's going to change their survivability. And that survivability then from those animals will affect the others that would be the little fish, the, the bumpers and other fish that live in their tentacles. The, a jellyfish out in the Gulf, if you've ever gone out and then you're diving and you see a large jellyfish, it's, it's a big moving reef. And sometimes on a really large jellyfish, there will be hundreds of animals living in those tentacles, hiding. It's a very protected place. They can get in there. Some of the little fish actually feed on the tentacles of the jellyfish, and they're able to hide in there, protected from predators. If those animals don't survive, even then the largest sea turtle that we'd find in the world, the leatherback sea turtle, were affecting its food. Can you tell me why we see jellyfish washing ashore? A lot of times when we see the animals wash up on the shore, uh, here in our area we've got a really big jellyfish that we find in the wintertime that is called a ropalema, or a lot of people here will call it the wintertime jellyfish. And as they reach the end of their life cycle, they will uh, are just brought through the currents as they wash closer to shore, they wash up on the beach. If they're offshore, uh, a lot of the areas where they, where they live as they die, they're just going to sink to the bottom and become food for other animals. It's the ones that are close to shore in the currents that end up on the beaches that we see. Uh, sometimes uh, on the beaches here you might see thousands or hundreds of thousands wash up on the beach. Some years you don't see as many. In, in my opinion on that, a lot of times where, where the animals die and, and where they are in relationship to the currents would determine how many of them end up on our beach. But with those big ropalema or the uh, Aurelia, the big, uh, what do we call the, uh, the ones that look the moon jellies, it, it depends on where they are in their life cycle relationship to that current when they die, when they get washed up to the beach. But they're very numerous. A lot of areas, we go out and dive here, uh, there are large schools of the moon jellies or rope and they're very important in the food cycle. A lot of animals feed on them. Thank you.